back. Welcome back to Sydney, guys. Nice little ride out to Acuna. I want to show you some footage. I want to show you some footage from my camera going up there because we use it a lot as a repeatable effort. So it's it's really cool kind of comparison thing that we can do. I like comparing the equipment. I like comparing the power, and I also really like comparing the weather and the seasons and well to see what kind of difference that might have and I think on this one you guys might find this pretty interesting so here is a shot from June this year so that is us doing this thing I think we're actually comparing wheels we're comparing the tubeless wheels at the time and I'll link that video below but you can see it's much colder I think seven degrees there on the screen compared to 18 uh, on the weekend and that 18 was well it was a lot higher actually because the humidity was there so as you guys have seen in the past this climb has well some climbing parts it has some five six seven percents which we're on right now but it also has some flat sections and i reckon that is what's going to be really interesting showing you here so one two percent this kind of stuff pretty much dead flat let's bring up june and let's have a look at those speeds you can kind of notice straight away that the summer version is well it's a little bit faster even though the power is very very similar Yes, there is a flappy jersey as well, but it's interesting how all this stuff adds up. And, well, as we sort of bring it up towards the top, Jesse ends up going 40 seconds faster with the exact same power. And the reason I actually wanted to bring this up is because when we were doing these back in winter and putting out good numbers and everything, and he was like, I'm going nowhere near my PB. This is super frustrating. And we're like going, well, it must be the tires. It must be the gear. It must be the bike. In the end, it's just a lot of factors. So I was wondering, do you guys have a climb, a repeatable climb that you do, an effort that you do a lot at home that has this kind of, well, weirdness to it where, you know, some days are faster than others, but you can't actually, well, put your finger on what it actually is. Fair to say we had a bit of an adventure in the last episode, didn't we? But I do think we actually have a couple of learnings from there, which I'll talk about when we get up to the office. But before we do, it's been a while since we checked in with Ben. So just before this cement truck goes past, let's check in with him. Yeah, so a bit of an update on where I'm at is things at the moment are still uh, primarily about building mo movement into my knee. Um, I'm not at the strength building stage quite just yet. That being said, things are heading in the right direction. Um, last night was actually the, the first night I swapped from flat pedals to um, proper clipped in pedals with riding yeah. shoes. The biggest difference for the last couple of weeks has been I can walk around now relatively normally. Um, I'm not up to walking sort of more than Two, three hundred meters at a time, but yeah, it made, it's, it's improved my day-to-day -day life a lot now that I'm back up and about and can be have a somewhat normal uh, daily life. Just quietly, how good is pro bike racing at the moment? It is awesome. There's rivalries. There's hatred. There's great, right? Oh, I love it. I feel sorry for people who just watch the tour. You are missing out all the good stuff. I don't know why I didn't breathe in. Anyway, speaking of missing out all the good stuff, I missed doing three pegs. Did you even know? Did I even mention that? Did that even make it on social media? God, I'm such a complainer. Two things I want to talk about with this because I think we actually have, well, some, some learnings from this, okay? The first is why did the pedal come off? Why did this left pedal come off my crank? Well, I've had one, two, three, four, five, six six including Alex people message me saying that they had a very very similar thing happen with the left pedal when running a new shoe cover seemingly what is happening is that the shoe cover is rubbing up against the pod creating enough resistance or some friction against it which is then allowing you as you pedal for it to unscrew off the crank. That seemingly is what happened. I've not been able to replicate this yet. So the six people, it's the first time they ever ran that particular shoe cover was in the event and that's when it came off. So the learning really is don't try a new shoe cover on the day of your event if you're running these. 
Now that is an answer we have. The answer we don't have yet from Asioma is why, why I'm still getting 2,000, 3,000 watt averages on my rides. So there's no factory reset you know on the app. You contact them, they come back to you. I've been going to and from with them over the last 10 days and no luck on that. Physically, this is perfect. There is no damage to this at all. I'm sure it just needs some sort of factory reset or reinstall of firmware, which you can't do through the app. And the other thing that you guys commented on, which now seems so obvious to me, but is another cool little learning here, I reckon, is why didn't I take my shoe off? Like, that is the obvious solution there was, okay, pull over, take my shoe off, then I could theoretically thread the pedal back on without my leg attached, and it would have been much easier. Well, I know the answer to it. So there's two answers. The first is, I was vlogging it, so it didn't really dawn on me to do that. I'm too busy getting the camera out, which I'm sure you're all appreciative of, but the other is, I think, I think the laces thing would have kind of stopped me doing it, just in the sense that it never dawned on me to do that, probably because of the, well, the punish that it would have been to undo them and do all that kind of stuff. Whereas it was just boa, boa, you know, click, click, out your shook, foot goes. Maybe we've found another very niche, very niche, because that's what we're all about here on this channel, finding useless niche tips to not go the laces loop route. You'll just have to, you'll just have to enjoy the, the sound of a pug doing pug things over there. I don't know what that pug's doing. Anyway, guys, while I've got a second, I just want to quickly say this to you. So easily the biggest long-term review question I get asked is the Campy record. I'm going to completely contradict myself. So the biggest benefit of this is purely its maintenance and replaceability, okay? So by that, I mean, we've really had very little problems. Apart from cables, which just have to be replaced. They've got to be replaced. If you don't do them, your cables will snap, especially on our bikes, which are internally cabled. You will run into problems with pure wearability. It's just second to none. We've had no issues. We had one rear derailleur, Jay's one I think went, but that was a crash, okay? So, and the thing that people don't tell you about electronic components is a lot of the time you're locked into a big expense when it's that. You know, for example, a SRAM derailleur, you're looking at close to $1,000 just to replace that. Whereas with the mechanical stuff, with our one, you can maybe replace the cage or you can replace the jockey. You know what I mean? But, but, I said I was going to contradict myself, didn't I? The other question I get asked is this. Would you buy a mechanical or a electronic group? So asking me, they're asking Chris, what would I buy with money? I would buy an electronic group set. Okay, because it is better. Because I try to look after my bike all the time. I try and stay on top of the charging and I prefer the performance of an electronic group set. That is pure honesty. Okay, go back, have a look at that mechanical group set vlog that we did, stand by 100% everything that we put in there. Oh, the only thing I'll add to it is just the pure replaceability maintenance side and a positive. And I know I'm certain that if you guys asked any of the guys in the team, like which ones would they prefer from a pure, like if you're given a group set, which one would you take? 99% of the guys will say electronic. That's just the truth. Welcome to Hornsby. Anyway, yeah, guys, so coming up, hopefully La Tap. I do want to try and ride that successfully and not have bits and pieces fall apart in the bikes. I'm going to vlog that. And also, I was wondering whether you guys would be interested in selection. So how we select the team, um, you know, for particular races. Just kind of open that sort of stuff up because I kind of think that's another little area of like domestic amateur bike racing that you guys might find interesting that I haven't really seen anything on on social media. So that's us done. Look at how I've just neatly, oh, oh, I just made that earlier, did I? It's almost as though I set this up. Anyway, all right, uh, I'll talk to you soon, hey? Oh, doing something to the to the van. You'll see it soon. We'll see you soon.